You're listening to Staying in the Game, a Plum Dragon Herbs podcast where we have conversations about mindset and techniques for staying at the top of your game. Uh, Welcome to the Plum Dragon podcast, Staying in the Game. I'm your host, Janelle Leatherwood, and we also have today with us Nick Patterson with Plum Dragon Herbs. And both of us are speaking with our guest, Dr. Carl Russo, who has been a doctor of chiropractic since 2010 and has a master's in clinical nutrition. Um, His current practice is inside a CrossFit gym where he's been at for the past three years. And I was wondering if you could just kind of help us understand, I I understand that was a risky move on his part and if he could just kind of explain why he made that shift in his career. So the first, say, seven years of my career, I was in a more traditional uh, shirt and tie type of medical office, right? A very acute pain, low back, neck, herniated disc, things like that, Um, high volume frequency of treatment. And I guess over time, my wife dragged me to a CrossFit class, which I kind of was against. I was always just a regular gym goer, uh, fell in love with it, and then fell in love with the idea of unlocking potential instead of just keeping people afloat, right? And a lot of acute care practices, people just come two, three times a week for the rest of their life and they you can't get them to do a minute of rehab exercises at home where the population of athletes that I deal with now are more driven to be better just overall in their health than just calming down pain. My patient base now is more, you know, I was doing this exercise and my shoulder does, just doesn't feel right or I can't do this squat properly, I can't move. And I give them three or four exercises or some treatment and they bounce back, right? So my treatment frequency went from two, three times a week to usually my patients, I say 90% of my practice is one time a week and it's more tune up, keeping people moving, keeping people healthy. It's a motivated population to get better instead of a population of people that were coming to me and putting it all on me to get them better. Uh, I'm a big believer that you got to do it yourself with help of a team. Uh, yeah. So I just I just kind of outgrew that first practice of what, what my what I wanted my scope to be. So I made the with the urge of my wife, I made the push to shut down that practice, which was fairly successful and restart a couple miles away from that practice inside the CrossFit gym. Okay. Kind of all just fell into place. Yeah. So no more shirt and ties. <laughs> no, I'm in a T-shirt and sneakers right now. And that's how my patients take me. And it was a. Uh, an adjustment for some that came over with me because they were used to, used to the shirt and tie look. And now I'm in a t-shirt or sometimes I even wear a hoodie if it's cold, uh, very relaxed, very calm. It's better for me to what I'm doing. I'm very active with my treatment, getting in there. So it's, it's easier than the shirt and tie. I'm not a shirt and tie type of guy. I thought I was definitely not. <laughs> so, so one thing I'd like to ask is what level caliber of athletes do you normally deal with and work with? So I, Again, I'm a believer that everyone is an athlete, right? All three of us are athletes to a certain degree, and it doesn't have to necessarily even be athletic performance, right? If you have children, you are definitely an athlete. If you have to commute to work, you are an athlete. You're, you're using your body to move around. So it's it's not always game time, three, two, one, go. Um, in my practice, I, I do from anyone from a 60-year-old person who is a very mild gym goer to professional athletes. Um, I've, I've treated some people in the professional space of CrossFit that actually compete as a living um and then on on some other sports as well some college level basketball football hockey players uh soccer so it's it's all different levels i I can't say i've done any uh professional mainstream professional sports like a professional baseball player or anything like that but up to say division one level college athletes i have touched on uh primarily i have several high level crossfit athletes that i treat and keep in one piece Mm -hmm. Uh, That's great. I I love that mindset of of everybody's an athlete. I I like that philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone uses their body for something. Yeah. Did you always know that you wanted to become a chiropractor? So I have an uncle who was actually a partner of mine in the first practice I was in, um, kind of the father figure for me. And it kind of just, he allowed me to be exposed to the environment. Um, I always kind of wanted to be in some sort of healthcare. Uh, I never wanted to be in you know, initially I wanted to be a pediatrician and then I just wasn't going to be able to tell a parent some bad news about their kid. I just wasn't, wasn't in me, but I still wanted to find a way to help people, to get people better um, naturally. Right. So through the high school years, college years, I was exposed through his practice. He's been in practice for 30 years. Um, 
And I just fell in love with the idea of treating people without any drugs or surgery, um, you know, to try to prevent people from going into an operating room, prevent people from living on in the penile of the CVS or Rite Aids or whatever you want, or whatever your store, local store is. Uh, I'm very much in tune with allowing the body to heal the body um, the best you can and anything that you can put in, you know, food is medicine, in my opinion. Um, so as far as hands-on treatment, you know, there's a lot of times I give nutritional advice for anti-inflammatory diets, using proper herbs, using, you know, things that come from the earth to mm -hmm. fix things that come from the earth, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm just not into mainstream medicine, if that makes sense. I don't want to sound crazy, but it's just uh, in a sense of, you know, I've just over the years, I fell in love with that. I saw some very, very amazing things through my uncle's practice uh, as I matured, and then I you know, I went to college, got a biology degree, hit all the prereqs to go to Cairo school. Uh, and I finished Cairo school in 2010 and then went back. Uh, I think in 2016, I finished my nutrition uh, master's. So and that's it for me for school. That's all the student loans I can. Yeah. Handle. So speaking about nutrition for a minute, like what okay. do you feel like are some of the biggest mistakes nutritionally that people are making? So my two biggest things I say is that people uh, and when I do. I have a couple of years of nutritional counseling. And the biggest thing is that people usually are under eating, eating and balanced, and they are been convinced by whatever that they are, that carbs are very bad for you, that carbs equal fat. So if you eat a piece of bread, you are going to be overweight or unhealthy or whatever it may be. Um, most people, if you take down their macronutrients, right, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, they're completely out of out of whack. They'll they'll be on a very high protein diet, which you can only digest and absorb so much, and they're very much limiting their carbohydrates. Which is, if unless you're in a, a ketone type diet, carbohydrates are your main source of fuel. So as long as your fuel is match, matching your output, and they're healthy carbs, right? I'm not saying a candy bar, but if you're having whole grains, good type of foods, you should burn it and not really lose lose weight as long as you're in some level of caloric deficit. Uh, you know, and it's the biggest misconception. They're out of balance and they're, they're stuck in, in a certain weight category or class or not hitting their goals. Mm -hmm. Um, and I try to reeducate them on, you know, on what a good carb is, you know, people, people don't understand that when you're on a high protein diet and you're slamming salads every day, salads are carbohydrates, right? So you're actually saying carbohydrates are bad, but you're eating big bowls of carbohydrates with a little bit of chicken on it. And, you know, I think the nutritional education that we get growing up just for individuals is very lacking. And we're left as adults not knowing how to actually properly nourish ourselves, which leads to a very inflamed, malnourished population. Mm -hmm. So, so to, to follow up to that, for, for our listeners, what do you think would be, I guess, a good, and I don't even want to call it a diet, but I guess it is a diet, like a good diet to follow just in terms of meals they should yeah. be eating? I like I like flexible dieting. I like counting macros a little bit, keeping kind of yourself in check for carbs, proteins, fats as a general baseline. Right. If, if you, you can you can do the math and all that stuff. But uh, if you take your body weight and cut it in half, that's about the amount of grams you should be having in fat per day. Right. A little bit above your body weight should be your carbohydrates if you're active. Um, and a little bit below your body weight should be your protein intake, depending on what you're doing. Right. If you're if you're active that's a if you're not active if you're if you're not an exerciser if you're not that the carbohydrates are probably going to be more in the 80 percent of your body weight to keep it down so you can play with numbers and find yourself out but i do some math sometimes in people's individuals diets are made it's 20 percent carbohydrate 20 percent of the body weight is carbohydrates and that's just not gonna fuel you probably right you can get chronic fatigue syndrome you can get just fogginess you know your brain runs on glucose glucose comes from carbohydrates so if you're not feeding yourself you're not running efficiently right it's 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 just you're just not putting good gas enough gas in the car to, to do the trip yeah so it's 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 really just finding stuff like that and so so I, please janelle you oh i was just gonna say i do yeah can you guys hear me okay yeah, yeah. can you hear me oh okay um i was just gonna say i know like the brain can can also run on like ketones and um yes and low carb diets and stuff and that they have sometimes been beneficial, you know, for certain conditions like epilepsy or Alzheimer's and stuff like that. Have yeah. you seen that? Yeah. Or? I mean, I mean, it all uh, general, general population that that's the diet that I give There's specific things like carbohydrates can have, can have, have issues with, uh, 
uh, epilepsy patients or people that have seizure conditions. Um, there are definitely, you know, specific things like that where you have to base it. So I'm a big believer to matching the diet to the individual, right? Like you, you brought up of uh, uh, the, the keto diet and that, that definitely, you can definitely switch your body to being a fat burning machine. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it has to come with a level of strictness. So it really comes up to the individual's devotion to the diet, right? Because you have to keep yourself in ketosis, which can be extremely difficult to do. Um, But it has worked wonders for people, right? It it literally just burns the fat off because you go from a sugar burner to a fat burner and it's, it's what people like, right? We all want to look, feel, we all want to put the jeans back on and they feel a little bit looser than the last time we put them on Mm -hmm. and, and keto will will definitely melt the fat off of you long term it's very hard to sustain right so i try to give people long-term solutions to short-term problems right if you're living a life of i have a wedding in a week and i want to fit into that dress but that's not really a long-term solution that's a short-term goal right so long-term health right it's even take the world of, of crossfit which i'm very much immersed in right people see crossfit as a very aggressive form of exercise, but it's what you see on TV and it's not long-term health. Functional movement is good for long-term health. If you're doing it through injury, if you're doing it through limitations, then it's not necessarily good for you, right? You have to stay within your means. So I try to pick out the individual, talk to a client, if I have a nutrition client, um, and see what's best for them as an individual. Mostly, I try to get people just counting their foods and being accountable to the calories and accountable to what they're putting in their body. Um, but there are definitely special populations that are going to thrive off of very low carbohydrate. And, and as far as health reasons, the keto keto diet can be beneficial, which I think is where it came from, was just that the low carb, high fat type of diet was was doing well with populations like that. Um, I remember in high school, to go a little tail off a tangent and touch base on that. I had a mm-hmm. friend in high school whose brother had cerebral palsy and epilepsy and his mother just dove into nutrition um, and all natural herbs and all natural remedies for to just try to stop these chronic seizures. And she basically cut carbs down. And this was in you know the late 1980s, 1990s when he was growing up. I was in high school, mid, mid to late 90s. Uh, and she put him on a no carbohydrate diet and he went from massive amounts of seizures to none in a year, like he would have one every five years type of thing. So it was a chronic rush to the hospital type of thing weekly to every five years. And it was basically, she found a way to match the diet to the individual, right? What works for me isn't going to work for you, isn't going to work for your neighbor. So it has to kind of fit your needs, not what I think your needs are, which comes from Mm -hmm. conversing with an individual, finding out their goals, finding out if they want to be 10 pounds lighter in three weeks or if they want to be healthy over the next 30 years. And then we match, we, you know, we play, play the matching game and we find, find what they need. I, I'm not a big fan of crash diets. I usually think that they come back with 10 extra f- pounds of friends. Um, it's better to lose it slow and steady than to, to speed to the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for that. So, that super, yeah. That was, that was super awesome. Mm-hmm. I felt like I learned a lot. So, I guess kind of a follow up to that, just because kind of we were just talking about the the mistakes that people, you know, come to what they're putting in their body. What do you think are some of the biggest myths when it just comes to being healthy overall? Yeah, I, I, I think just in general, people rush to rush to the finish line, right? They're, they, they think they have to be a certain way and they don't really balance their life how, how they should. Um, you know, there are things like hydration, variation, overdoing it, and taking care of your flexibility that they're just not into it. They think they have to go full speed ahead. They have to lift all the weights possible and lift all of the, you know, run the fastest mile and things like that. And people don't take into account what they're capable of doing on a given day, right? So I think just like with anything, fitness has to be, or your health, and I usually connect health with fitness, it has to be it has to be evolving. It has to be based on how you feel that day, right? I, I go into CrossFitters or weightlifters, right? And they're, they're very much based on percentages. You're going to deadlift 80% of your one rep max today, but your one rep max was tested a year and a half ago, and it might not be the same. It could be more, it could be less, but it's given the day, right? Uh, it's an accumulation of what you've done over the last 10 days. How much have you slept? How much have you hydrated? How much have you recovered to basically do 
ask do ask your body to do what you need it to do, right? So the eighty percent of your activity on Monday could be very different than three Mondays ago or three Mondays from now, based on your life, right? We're we're stressed, right? We're making sure the podcast is all set up, and we're dealing with that, and we're dealing with work, and we're dealing with kids, and you never know what what's going to be given on a given day. So it's I find that people stick to a regimen of health, and they don't actually allow themselves to teeter totter with diet, with with fitness, with just lifestyle, right? You have to cut yourself a break a little bit and allow yourself to maintain longevity, right? It's not, it's, it's good to look good fast for the beach, but it's also good to be 60 years old and not crippled, right? And not, not being able to get off the mm-hmm. toilet or get out of bed or dress yourself or 70 years old or whatever the age group you want to be in when you're very, very old. 60 is not old, um, but it's a sense of, of maintaining a little bit of leverage on either side of the scale, knowing when to push, knowing when to pull back, um, and knowing how to take care of yourself. If we go back to the, what we just talked about, right? Knowing what diet works for you, right? I can't give everybody the same health plan. I have to go the individual, right? And I think that's where the misconception of health is, is that with, let's take mainstream medicine, let's go right into that, right? They, they take, you have high blood pressure. We're going to give, we're going to give everybody this high blood pressure medicine. You have a doctor who is urged to give one blood pressure medication to all of his patients, but he could have 500 patients with 500 different cardiovascular systems and 500 different other systems that are revolving around the cardiovascular system, but he's giving a blanket answer to their health problem. Um, and I don't think that's that's a good solution. I think you need to figure out how, you know, I, I again, I'm not a believer in medicine, but if there are going to be medicines and there are useful tools and there are people that are at their, you know, that it's risk reward. I think that a, a doctor should should be pulling into his bag and pulling out ten different blood pressure medications and finding out which one matches right with each patient, or five, or twenty, or whatever it may be. There should be multiple options here. Um, I can't believe that there's one solution, right? Uh, I, I see patients in my own practice chiropractically, and there's no one solution for a shoulder problem because a shoulder can present in multiple different ways and multiple different aspects of attacking it to get it better right and it's the same way nutrition and health fitness it's 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 variation from left to right of your neutral i think yeah. i answered that i think i answered that i'm not sure yeah, yeah. I, I tend to ramble you can shut me up uh, I, time. Yeah. I, lo- I love it well a quick follow-up to that especially what you were saying in the beginning what do you say to that high school athlete that college athlete who is just giving it everything they've got day in, day out, and it needs to take a break. And maybe they're seeing you because they are dealing with a shoulder injury, but th- but they're saying, you know, Dr. Russo, no, I got it. I can push through. It doesn't matter. What what What's your advice to that person? So, so my hardest level of athlete is that age group, mm-hmm. is the 14-year-old to 21-year-old, right? Either they're trying to get that Division One scholarship or they're trying to maintain that division one scholarship we got two 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 arms of a problem here you have a, a kid right who has a metabolism that allows them to be beat to hell and get up the next day and do it again but that's not necessarily the right answer right so i had a couple of well, let's say a year ago i had a 12 year old little league baseball player um and he basically was screaming tommy john surgery down the road if he did if he kept on this path and my job there wasn't to necessarily treat him and get him better. It was to get his parents in the treatment room and have a conversation with them. And I asked them, how many baseball games is your son playing? Did he play this last season? So this must have been probably November of last year. They said that in this last season, if they asked all of his travel teams, because he was on three travel teams and he had spring ball and he had fall ball and then he was about to play winter ball, he played about 190 baseball games. So, I, yeah. I, and I just looked at them. I said, do you know how much a, a 25-year-old professional baseball player plays? And they said, and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I was like, well, they, they play about 30 games less than your son, and your son's 12. His body's rapidly growing. His bones are growing. His muscles are trying to keep up with his bones growth. And you're going you're gonna to ruin him before he even gets a chance to play high school ball, let alone Division One scholarship right now. On top of the games, he's getting trained twice a week by a pitching coach. He's getting trained twice a week by a strength and conditioning coach. He's getting trained twice a week by a hitting coach, right? It's the amount wow. of time and effort and money that these that the that they put in for a chance at Division One scholarship. It's not it's 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 you're never gonna get there because your elbow is gonna blow out at 13, right? You're gonna start high school with stitches up your elbow because it's just not gonna gonna happen. So 
you have parental pressure, Division One scholarship pressure, which is fueling some of these kids to keep playing, playing, playing. You have a pure love for the game. The kid would have played 200 more games, right? He was a kid that came home from practice, picked up his bat, crossed the street, played in the playground, and just hit balls for an hour alone. He just loves baseball. And I, I get it. But there's a sense of, and he can get up and feeling the next day. But it's a conversation of, you might be able to do it, but could you do it better if you took a day off? Right? So you got to think that the, we, we, we all want to walk into game time 100%. If you're playing whatever sport over and over and over and over again, you're never quite getting back to that 100%. So if you're playing football, your goal is to be close to 100% on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, depending on where you are, right? Baseball, it's all about trying to keep yourself ready for the next game. As you get higher, the games get closer together. But a sense of timing of when to train, how hard to train, and when to know that you should just move and sweat a little bit, get some movement through your body, and get ready for action, right? Practice should be harder than the game and practice should kind of slope you down and then recovery should slope you back up to game time. And a 21 year old student athlete is very hard to, it's very hard to convince them that they need to take a day off, especially in the sense of they got three people looking for their spot, right? Yeah. It's, it, it's a sense of, 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 if I take a day off, I'm going to lose my spot or I'm going to lose my edge or I'm going to, start striking out or I'm going to miss the free throw or whatever it may be. And it's, it's all about trying again to taking a step back and looking big picture at your training and your sport as a whole, knowing that what, that it's, it's all about getting ready for the game time. And it, it's not about sometimes you can, you know, you can overdo it and you can a, not even just injury your performance can suffer, right? The slope of performance, you know, every time that you're, if you're, showing up the game time 75% of your potential, then you're playing 75% of your potential. And then that's the difference between making the free throw or not. That's the difference between hitting a 450 foot home run or a 350 pop up, right? It's, it, it's all that. It's the ability for a quarterback to throw 50 yards down the sideline or not because his arms fatigued because he threw 450 yard passes this week. So it's trying to educate them on, on being in tune. And sometimes even though if you feel good, you shouldn't go. You should you should rest. You should do things out of recovery. You should stretch. You should ice or heat or get some you know body work, massage, chiro, PT, acupuncture. Uh, you know, use recovery tools out there, right? I know you guys have a lot of good recovery tools, things like that. I urge people to try to find natural remedies for muscle soreness, for fatigue, muscle fatigue, joint aches, joint pains, um, and try to educate the younger athlete to be able to have a long career, right? Some of them will go on to professional sports and, and that's amazing, but you have to know how to take care of your body because you're using your body to make a living, right? Uh, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah. Say that, I say that across a lot, not even just as I go back to everyone's an athlete and we need to keep our body moving and find the best, healthiest way for having a you know, longevity, healthy, healthy movement, healthy life. Yeah, you brought up a really good point because that's something that we see too a lot of at Plum Dragon Herbs is, you know, people don't want to take the time that it takes to really recover and to yeah. heal. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's, that, it's, it's a constant conversation I have with people, right? They hurt their shoulder. Be an athlete or be like an athlete playing a sport or just a, a regular patient, you know, you you hurt your shoulder and they I have people come in and they're, you know, their shoulders two, two weeks post-incident. And I go, why isn't it, why isn't it better? Why can't I push weight over my head without pain? And I, you know, it's, it's the analogy of they come to people like us and they want lightning fast recovery, right? But they go and mm -hmm. they fall off the monkey bars as a kid and they break their arm and the doctor tells them eight weeks in a cast, I'll see you in eight weeks and it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. But the body heals as the body heals. If it's a bone, muscle, sprain, strain, the body's going to take time to heal and people need to be a bit patient, but they need to incorporate things like myself and like you guys to speed it up as fast as possible. Right. It's, it's all about, you know, my job is not to, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a magician. I'm not going in and fixing things. I'm pushing the body along to be better. So I'm speeding it up. Right. I, I'm not, I'm closing that window. I'm taking that eight week recovery and trying to get it to five and right. or whatever it may be. And, and it's the same thing using tools that we have and reaching into every single you know, it's going back to the medical doctor, right? Taking one pill and giving it to everybody. I'd like to, I like to have 15 bags of tools around me and pull into all of them and then give people four or five different tools to, to, to get to the finish line or get back to the starting line, however you yeah. want to see it. So what do you think mm -hmm. it's going to take to sort of start changing that narrative in the, in, in the Western world, the, the avenues that, you know, all of us are a part of work? 
yeah, I mean, I think uh, things things like this podcast and you guys keep going and keep trying to get as many people that are of like mind to out there. And, you know, even if you hear if you educate one more person a week, you're doing your job. Um, it's 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 me, people like myself uh, standing up and looking for other outlets. Right. I mean, I found my way here. I, I, I could have been a pediatrician. And what have I been doing? I would have been dumping drugs and surgery down children's throats. Uh, it just was didn't vibe with me from a young age, uh, and it probably never will vibe vibe with me. So it's it's just it's it's all about just allowing your voice to, in my opinion, allowing your voice to be heard and speaking the truth and not being afraid to have somebody tell you you might be a little bit crazy for the things that you do to keep yourself well. Right? Uh, I've been called crazy many times, especially in the the, the current situation of times. Uh, my outlook on health and wellness and immunology is uh, very much different than the mainstream and it's okay to be called crazy and it's okay because one there might be one person that is listening that doesn't think you're crazy and then that might give them 10 more healthy years in the long run right I don't think yeah. people under- understand that when you're going down an aisle and you're choosing a name brand analgesic there are more hospital injuries per year based on over-the-counter pain medicines than anything else. There's more hospital visits a year than even heart, for heart attacks or cancer than side effects of over-the-counter pain medicines when there are natural remedies out there. There are natural alternatives to damage. And I, you know, it's, it's not about blowing smoke up you guys. It's about factual information. There's hundreds of thousands of hospital visits. There's ulcers. There's digestive issues, right? I'm a big believer that you need to keep your gut clean to keep your body clean. And if you're constantly making your body process chemicals and process non-natural things, you're causing chronic inflammation. You're putting yourself at for risk at, of other long-term comorbidities down the line. So keeping it as natural, as less processed, spending the little bit of extra money if you can to get the better, cleaner product. I'm for it. I'm all about it. People spend $300 to get their hair dyed. They won't spend two extra dollars to get a natural, healthy remedy. Blows yeah. my mind. Blows my mind every day. But well, the, 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 odd part, the, the odd part for me is that everything you said is just so logical. Yeah, it's it's hard to view it as anything other than logical. And th- that's always been the most illogical thing, in my opinion, is that people listen to something like that and say, yeah, well, maybe not, you know? Yeah, I, it's 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 a struggle. I mean, I'm you know, I, it's it's a struggle for the the realm of of health that we're in, right? I mean, like you said, for we're having a conversation, and I could have this conversation with ten other people and say the same things, and there's gonna be people that look at me like this guy's out of his mind, right? Or whatever topic, right? It's probably yeah. topics within our realm, but we're conversing, and it's like all I see is your guys' head shaking, like yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep, like we're all on the same page, mm-hmm. right? We're in the same realm of things, and and it's. It just it, that population of people. I do think it's shifting. I think people are are kind of waking up. Uh, I think the positive of, of, of everything going on in the world. I think people are going to be a little bit more in tune to inflammation in their body, their health, um, things like that. I think people are very acutely aware of how fragile their health can be, um, and I think that's going to long term drive them into a better direction. Maybe I'm being a little bit hopeful. Uh, rose tinted glasses, as they say, but I, I do think that the, the everything that's going on, everything that we've just endured um, health wise uh, is going to have a positive long term effects for a lot of people trying to yeah. be, you know, we just got we're, you know, we're in the business of, of, of controlling inflammation, right? Joint joint stuff, aches, pains. Uh, we just went through a health crisis based on inflammation in the body. Right. And it's found that People basically that are showing up to the game very inflamed are suffering way worse with this pandemic than anything else. Not to bring up social issues or whatever, but it's just I think it's in a long term when people sit back and listen to really what this was, it's going to be an inflammatory disorder. And I think people are going to do more to try to control the inflammation in their body. And that's going to be up to us to kind of keep the education train going. Yeah. And I want to just take a minute like for our listeners just to kind of explain a little bit about, so Plum Dragon's D. Jow product does just that. Um, it it ha- it um, addresses the inflammation in the body, and our product is like a ter- uh, a topical analgesic, an herbal analgesic. And what's unique about it is that it's really driving <laughs> herbal nutrition into the cellular level, and so. 
you know, we talked earlier on in the conversation about malnutrition and, and people aren't getting the nutrition and they're starving their cells, essentially. And what's crazy awesome about D. Jiao is it actually drives nutrition right into the cell in a topical way. And I don't think people, you know, when they think about treating um, inflammation, you know, the first things that come to their mind probably are like the NSAIDs and, you know, all the over-the-counter pain medication stuff. So I, I love that we're having this conversation about um, alternative ways to address pain and inflammation. And I just kind of wanted to make sure that our listeners were educated on on that aspect of Plum Dragon. Um, any, any other thoughts that you guys have on um, herbal benefits? I, so I, uh, you, got, you guys actually sent me some of your stuff and my mom has, to get, to get personal for a second and some, some first-hand experiences, I don't get behind any sort of companies or I wouldn't come on if I didn't think that it was a good product or that it would help. So when you sent me the thing, the first thing I did, my mother has very, very arthritic knees. Mm -hmm. So, and I won't even try to pronounce the name of the supplement, the herbal remedy you gave me, but I gave it to her because I figured she'd be the best test candidate. I told her, follow the instructions. She put it on three times a day. And she's somebody that is a shuffle stepper, has a lot of pain. She's bone on bone. She needs knee replacements, but doesn't want to do the surgery, right? She's just afraid of surgery. So we try everything, right? I've tried everything to kind of help her knees. She gets treated, et cetera. And she, after a couple of days, she, I asked her, you know, have you been using it? Yes. What was, what's the result? And she said she had about a 10% drop in discomfort in, in the knees after a few days. Mm -hmm. And she was like, uh, I don't know. Right. You know, but people, people have to keep in mind that a 10% drop over a few days of something natural and you could have more. I'm just saying you don't need to be – people want this lights, turn the pain switch off type of remedy, and that's not always the case, right? And I have the conversation with patients all the time. People come in, and they're 10 out of 10 pain, and then they come back in the next treatment, and they're 7 out of 10 pain, right, or 8 out of 10 pain. And I have to look at them like you just got I, – I, I, you did nothing. You, did, you, know, you only saw me once. It was a 45-minute treatment where you only put herbs on f for a couple of days, and you got – 10 to 20% relief, right? And I mean, I know that's very subjective and, and it's, it's, it, but it's still, it's, it's when, if you would have walked in with 10 out of 10 pain and I said, I can get you 10% better, the answer is usually, I'll do anything, doc. Whatever, if, if you give me any relief, it's a good thing, but then they get 10%, it's not enough, right? So it's, it's, it's keeping yourself in mind of, of when you're 10 out of 10 pain, 8 out of 10 pain, if you can just chip away at that and add more stuff to it to, to keep yourself chipping away at that pain, 10% is huge, right? 10% is 10% more function. It's, it's maybe getting up the stairs a little bit easier or picking something off the ground a little bit easier. It's, it's keeping in mind what, what relief is and what you're doing. And, and the fact that you're not using things that shut the switch off automatically, you're using things that are actually improving joint complexes, right? Her knees are improved. Her brain is not tricked telling her that there's no more pain. Her, her right. knees are 10% improved. When you come and get treated in my office, you're 10% improved, 15% improved. I didn't do some wizardry and shut the pain symptoms off. I got you better. And that's what your product right. did, did for my mother's knees, right? It oh, got that's her fabulous. It got her 10% better. And for somebody dying in chronic pain, limited with, with mobility, 10% can be, can be 10%. Can, I have a son, 10% is playing with my son 10% more. And that's yeah. what people I think need to realize when they're using these things that you're actually causing actual improvements, actual drop in inflammation. You know, you're bringing nutrients into a joint space, which is important. And 10% is huge in the long run. People forget, you know, pain is an emotion and people forget that what the 10 out of 10 felt like. They now feel yeah. eight out of 10 and they want now six, seven, you know, five, whatever it may be. Hold on to the fact that you're 10% better and, and, mm -hmm. and realize what you're using to get there. It was, yeah. that, that means, you know, so much to us that mm -hmm. your mom was able to, to benefit from that. I mean, that's truly why we do what we do. Yeah. And what, what we found with, with our products is it really is that a week and a half, two week mark where the, the real benefits start kicking in. Okay. So, so I'd be excited to hear, you know, when she reaches that point, how, how her knees are, are I'll feeling. Definitely follow, yeah, I'll definitely follow you guys up keep you guys posted on that. Yeah, that's so, that's so great to hear. And and yeah, yeah. What, what you hit on that's, you know, important to us as well is it isn't masking the pain. You know, that that's one of our core philosophies is 
let's do this the right way and the healthy way. And yeah, maybe yeah. it'll be a little bit longer, but that's just where the healing's taking place. The reason it just yeah. feels longer is because we're not putting anything unnatural in our products that are going to trick the brain and say, oh, the well, biggest, not yeah, it. the biggest problem with tricking the brain is, is now you're tricked into thinking you can do more than you can do. Right. So yeah. you're constantly living on these tricks. Right. Or these these light switch turning off type of applications then you're probably pushing yourself into further knee degeneration or shoulder degeneration or spinal degeneration because now you're the pain is pain has a purpose pain is telling you to cut yeah. it out you're doing something wrong right and and it's it's about alleviating getting it better adding products like you guys have adding people like me to get you recovered not necessarily through right i don't want to get people through life i want people recovered and enjoying life uh it's just, just yeah. my, my main, my main mindset here is, is to listen to the pain and follow, follow it, right. Follow it to the right answers. Don't just shut it off and keep going through, or, you know, I have patients that come in and they're, they're taking two a leave, like they're Flintstones vitamins, right. They're just, it's their mm -hmm. daily regimen of, of, oh no, I take two a leave in the morning, every single morning over the last seven years. And you're just like, Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, why? Like, I, it's like, you know, it's just like, yeah, you know, well, I've had this pain for seven years. So it's, and I've seen crazy things like that. You know, it's, it's, they list them as their vitamins. It's like vitamin C, yeah. vitamin E, this, this, this tool leave. And you're just like, it's not a vitamin. It's not, it's not a daily supplement. It's not, this is a medicine. It's a medicine. I know you don't need to talk to a pharmacist or a doctor to get it, but everything in these stores are medicines and they have chemicals and they process and they're created. It's, it's it's driving you towards the red line of health, not the green good side or whatever colors you want to put on it. It's 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 you know, and if you're putting anything in your body that's not driving you towards health, you're you're driving yourself in the opposite direction, and it's not a good option yeah. for me. Well, it's know, the it's well, the you, duct tape analogy, you know, the, you know how much duct tape can you duct tape can you throw towards a problem that it's not going to solve it at all? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that completely. And, you know, you brought up the point that these people are taking pills for seven years. You know, their injuries are years in the making. They can't expect to be healed in, you know, one treatment with you it's, or something like that. It's a, it's a key point that I say both chiropractically and nutritionally is, you know, you take a 35-year-old man or woman, and if it's nutritionally, then they're not happy with their weight or their look, right? That's usually what people reach out for nutritional counseling. And or an injury, right? And like you said, there's time. There's a time frame on that. So it took you 35 years to get to me. It's not going to take me three days to get you where you want to go. It's going to take time mostly, right? And the longer you are dealing with an ailment, the longer the recovery, natural recovery is going to be, right? If like you said, the shoulder, if your shoulder has been hurting, or your low back has been hurting for seven years, it's not going to take probably seven weeks to resolve it. You'll get relief. We'll, we'll move you down that chain, but you're not going to be resolved quickly because it's a long chronic yeah. inflammation the body's now doesn't even know how to work without that inflammation in the spine or the knee or the shoulder so it's yeah it's it's a challenge it's a challenge for what we do it's a challenge for what i do it's a challenge for what you guys do so here, yeah absolutely in, absolutely so to follow up to that you know what advice would you give let's just blanket statement almost anybody in the world of you should start doing X, Y, and Z today if you're unhappy with where you are in your overall healthy lifestyle. You know, what, what X, Y, and Z would you do? Can I, First thing I, tell Can I interject for one of more? Of course. So I was just thinking like with Father's Day coming up, you know, I'd love to okay. maybe focus tips specifically for men's fitness as well. So I don't know if you want to okay. try and tackle those together so or separately. So let's go on a Father's Day theme, right? What if, what like. What are the stereotypical fathers go do on Father's Day, right? They go grab three of their buddies and they go golfing 18 holes after not golfing for two years because their wife and their kids won't let them out of the house. I'm talk talking about myself, right? So what happens is you're doing an exercise, right, that you haven't done in a long time. Golf is an exercise. You might drink some beers and you might be driving in a car, but you're still asking your body to go through a lot of rotational torquing movements. So to get prepared for that, I would definitely hydrate very well, which would be my blanket thing without Father's Day, wa drinking water, water intake chronically low. I'd say 80% of people that I come in contact with are dehydrated. Uh, my general simple room, rule of thumb is half half of your body weight in ounces. So if you're a hundred pound person, drink 50 ounces of water a day, add water for every cup of coffee that you drink. So if you drink eight ounces of coffee, 
add eight ounces of water because coffee is going to dehydrate you. For the golfer or the father that's about to go active, right? They get the free day. It's a father's day. They're going to wake up. They're mm-hmm. going to get kids going to cook them breakfast. And they're going to go do what they want because they got their hall pass. Make sure you're doing stretches or working on your flexibility, mobility for those things, right? Last week I had a guy come in and he basically couldn't rotate to his right because all he did was rotate to his left swinging a golf club for three hours. So that being said, spend some time rotating in the opposite direction of your swing, right? Or spending opposite time in opposite directions of whatever sport you're doing, right? Even somebody who's going to sit at a computer for hours, they should spend time doing stretches in opposite directions. So if you're sitting down for hours at a desk, put your leg behind you and stretch out your hip flexors for some time to kind of decompress the body, right? But you want to, if, if you're going to go do an activity on Father's Day or do something different, uh, drink some water, stretch, prepare yourself, do a little bit of a warm up before beforehand, maybe swing a golf club a couple of times before you actually go and you're with your buddies trying to outdrive them. Um, stay within yourself, right? Don't let your buddies drive your ego. Um, you know, guys in a sense, girls too, but guys in a sense get caught up in beating each other, very competitive, especially on stuff like that signs of strength. So stay within your means. Don't overdo it. The, the moment you go past that line of capacity or what you're actually able to do is when you start having to pay me money to come get treated and untwist what you did on the golf mm-hmm. course, right? So spend some time taking care of yourself. Take some time checking your own ego, you know, get in your own headspace and 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 stay within your, within your means. Um, you know, the, the overdoing it, putting too much stress on your body, which is like you said, chronically malnourished, chronically dehydrated, is just asking for needing wholesale shipments of your stuff and wholesale treatment visits mm-hmm. in my office. Uh, and as much as I love treating people and getting them better, it's, 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 it is my kind of philosophy that I want to see people as at least often as possible. So take care of yourself, get prepared. Don't, you can't just pick up any sort of activity and just go do it. Do some things that are going to get you ready to do the activity, um, both nutritionally, hydration, and physically warming yourself up, getting ready for, for whatever you think is fun. Oh, that's great. Great tips. I love those. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, of course. One thing that I definitely want to hit on, but before we wrap up is one thing that we emailed about back and forth. I'd love for you to talk about the importance of sleep. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 again, it's, it's part of the stress cycle, right? Where we, we, I I'm in New York, so it's where we're constantly, you know, where it's a population of just everyone on the rat race, right? It's, it's, it's working extended hours. It's trying to find balance of your family. It's trying to find balance nutritionally. And a lot of times people will sacrifice sleep in order to get something else done or accomplished. And I mean, sleep is, is, is our, is our biggest recovery tool, right? It's just sleep is, is, is when our body is regenerating is when it's healing. It's when it's doing its most stuff, right? Uh, it, it's, it's our time to kind of get ready for the next day. And sometimes we allow Monday stuff to steal from Tuesdays. It goes back to athletic performance, right? It's big picture. If you know, I was having a conversation with the acupuncturist here last week about getting sick and stuff like that. And he said, the biggest thing he does when he feels a cold going on, he shuts his world down and goes to sleep. That's it. He just goes to sleep. And he's like, this is what my body needs. He'll cut out some, you know, bad choices nutritionally. And he fights it with sleep. He allows his body basically to hibernate to heal. And it's, it's a, it's a pretty good statement, right? It's your muscles. And if you have an achy back or an achy knee, stuff like that, some rest or stuff like that, some soreness is going to go on. It's, you have something called delayed onset soreness with working out, right? Meaning that you can work out on Monday, you might feel great on Tuesday and you might feel really bad on Wednesday, right? You're just how your body catches up. And I, I have found clinically that a lot of time it comes with a good, like accumulation of hours of sleep. So your body has now started to rebuild and then that's the soreness. So your body has gotten time to kind of catch up with the activity that you did on Monday that kind of broke you down a little bit, exercise breaks you down. And now that build back up is what that soreness or that recovery type of feeling is. So I think sleep is our biggest tool. Um, you know, we're going to process our, you know, we're going to be able to rest and digest and we're going to be able to take to process some inflammation and we're going to be able to process. That's why, you know, if you sprain your ankle, when you wake up the next day or, you know, there's a morning that you wake up and you feel better. Or if you're sick with a cold, sometimes you just want to go to sleep because, you know, tomorrow I'm going to wake up and feel 10, 10, 15, 20 percent better. Right. And that should open up. That should have the light bulb over our head saying sleep is our greatest recovery tool. It's it's our it's when we regenerate. It's when we heal. It's when we 
get ready for the next day. Hey, how can people get in touch with you um, after they've heard this show? My, my biggest, I guess, place to get me is on Instagram. And it's uh, my Instagram name is Functional Care Rx. And we'll, we're going to post show notes about this. And so um, our listeners can have a way to link up to you and your Instagram page. And if there's anything else you want to send us, we can link to that as well. So, awesome. Yeah. We really appreciate you coming on our show. Yeah, I appreciate the invite. It was a lot of fun. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I feel like out of it. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Anytime. And thanks to all of our listeners for joining us today. Be sure to click the subscribe button, leave us a comment, and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you like to listen. By doing this, more people will have a chance to hear what our amazing guests have to share. Until next time.